Welcome. In this session, we'll define an adjacency matrix of a graph. So let's consider a graph G that has vertices V and edges E. And let's suppose that there are N vertices and M edges. We'll define the adjacency matrix matrix and we'll write that as A of G as and we'll say we'll define it by the entries as as having entries and what we'll say at is entry I J of this matrix is defined as 1 if vertex i vertex j edge is in the set of edges and 0 if vertex i vertex j is not in the set of edges. We'll see immediately that the adjacency matrix A is a binary matrix. Each entry is 1 or 0. We can also see that it's a symmetric matrix. That is, that because we will represent ij and ji as also as equivalent edges, that means that when we come across ij in the edge list, we can mark entry ij in the adjacency matrix and entry ji in the adjacency matrix as 1, and then everything else is going to be 0. So let's take a simple example, and we'll refer to this as graph G1. And let's suppose that the graph looks like this. It's got entries, vertices 1, 2, and 3, and each of these is connected, so there's a little circuit there. And then suppose that we have 4 and 5, and they're connected. So what we can see is that there's a circuit present in this subgraph. This is a very simple subgraph, and this subgraph has two components because there's no path in this graph from 1 to 5. Now, let's write the adjacency matrix for this. So that will be A1, we'll call it, and this will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 by 5. And what we'll do is we'll fill in the 1s and first, and then we'll fill in the zeros. So what we can do is we can begin with vertex 1. Vertex 1 is connected to vertex 2. So that means that entry 1, 2 is 1, and entry 2, 1 is 1. 1 is connected to 3, so entry 1, 3 is 1, and entry 3, 1 is 1. 1 is never connected to itself because we don't permit loops, and 1 is not connected to 4, 1 is not connected to 5, and so we begin to fill out our matrix. Well, let's observe immediately that the diagonal has to be all zeros because we're not permitting loops. So that means we can immediately write all of these as zeros. Let's now turn to vertex 2. Vertex 2 is connected to vertex 1, which we've noted. Vertex 2 is connected to vertex 3. So that means that entry 2, 3 and entry 3, 2 are 1s, and it's not connected to 4 or 5. Then vertex 3 is connected to 1 and connected to 2, which we've already noted, and it's not connected to 4 or 5. And then vertex 4 is connected to vertex 5, and vertex 5 is connected to vertex 4, and so we have the adjacency matrix. We can make a simple observation, which is we can see that this is partitioned into two blocks. And this block and this block are non-zero matrices. And then this is a non-square 
block of zeros, and this is a non-square block of zeros. Let's take an example of a bipartite graph. And let's use the same example that we've seen in a previous session. So let's say that graph G2 is this. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we had one connect, we had this picture from a previous session. And now the adjacency matrix, A2, will be, this will be a little bit larger, and we can immediately fill out the diagonals because no vertex is connected to itself, so that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by 6. We need a little more space there. And now we're ready to begin. 1 is connected to 2 and 2 is connected to 1, 1 is not connected to anything else. Two is connected to one. We've noted two is connected to three. And two is also connected to four. So that is two is connected to four. So that'll be entry two, four, and entry four, two. Two is not connected to five or six. Those are zeros. Turning to node. 3. 3 is connected to 2, which we've noted, and not anything else. So we can fill that as zeros and that as zeros. 4 is connected to 5, so 4, 5, and 5, 4. 4 is connected to 6, so that's 4, 6, and 6, 4. And 5 and 6 are not connected. Now, what we'll observe here is that, in general, from this definition, what we're going to have are some important properties. One is, this matrix is always real. The other is that it's always symmetric. And the third is that it always has a zero diagonal. And if we now recall some of the basic properties of matrices from prerequisite courses, if a matrix is real and symmetric, then that means that all of its eigenvalues are real. And because the diagonal, the sum of the diagonal is the sum of the eigenvalues, that means that the eigenvalues also sum to zero. Now, let's have a, a simple definition. This is, all, this is given in the notes, and it may be from previous courses, it is that the ones vector, we'll write it as a one with an arrow, and this is um, each entry is one. And this is, a, this is a very useful term. So now, let's calculate what is a one times its ones vector. Well, that will be, if we now, if we now, let's use dots here to indicate that we're doing a, a temporary calculation. One, two, three, four, five. What would this be? That would be zero plus one plus one plus zero. So that would be, that would be two. This would be, oh, what this will do is this will count the number of ones that are in a row. So I can now really speed through this. So the sum of these is 2. The sum of these is 2. The sum of these is 2. The sum of these is 1. The sum of these is 1. What is our second adjacency matrix times the ones vector? Well, this will be a six entry vector. And now we'll have the same observation that A2 times its ones vector will be the sum of the entries in each row. So that will be 1, 1, 2, 3, 3, 1, 
one, two, three, one, and one. So, what we can conclude from this is that if we multiply the adjacency matrix by the ones vector, the vector that results is the degrees of the vertices of the graph. Let's check that. What this says is that for this graph, vertex 1 has degree 2, 1, 2. Vertex 2 has degree 2. Vertex 3 has degree 2. Vertices 4 and 5 have degree 1. Similarly, over here, it's saying that vertex 1 has degree 1. Vertex 2 has degree 3. Well, there are 1, 2, 3 edges that contain vertex 2. 1, 2, 3 edges that contain vertex 4, and so on. So by doing a matrix vector calculation from the adjacency matrix of a graph, we can deduce a property that we don't need to traverse a graph for. Once we have its adjacency matrix, we can start to extract some useful properties by using simple linear algebra.